The first thing to do is to isolate the issue to either the loader or the CS1 itself. The easiest way to do that is take off the loader you're using with your setup and replace it with a different loader and test it again. If the rate of fire issue is resolved at this point, then you know the issue is with your loader and we'll go into some detail about what you should do in that case. If the rate of fire issue remains, we need to start looking at the marker itself. And towards the end of the video, I'll go into some detail about what to look at, what to check and what to change on your marker. If you have isolated the issue to your loader and your loader happens to be a Virtue Spire, we're lucky enough to have Nicky T here who's going to run through some troubleshooting tips for you now. Alright Nicky, good to see you again. Good to see you. He's going to run through a couple of things with the Virtue loader, just in case you're having some of these rate fire issues we've been talking about. I'm going to leave you with Nick. Quick little setup guide for your Virtue Spire. First thing you want to do, remove the rain lid, pull out the tray, check that you've got three brand new alkaline AA batteries installed. Once you've done that, you can also pull off your drive cone, check the condition of the fingers, Close up. Check there's no tears and check that they're nice and stable because that's going to give you the best possible feed speed for your marker. Okay, tray back in the shell, rain lid back on or speed feed, and you're going to check your settings. Okay, push and hold the LED cover, push the power button, release the cover, and the purple light will show. Push the cover until the red light shows, and that's the G-Force sensitivity setting. Push and hold until the light goes out, count the flashes, and that's the stock setting of four. If you need to raise the sensitivity, push and hold till the light goes out again, let it cycle through, and click one, two, three, four, five times. Wait until it returns to normal and you're good to go. Thank you very much Nick, cheers for coming in. Pleasure. Of course if you're using any other type of loader please refer to your manufacturer's documentation. So thank you very much to Nicky T there for running through the Virtue Spy with us. If however after swapping over the loader and the issue persists then we need to look in a bit more detail at the CS1. We're going to run through some setting changes and also some mechanical inspection of the solenoid components that could potentially cause issue with low rates of fire. The easiest way to do that is down on the chrono range, so I'll take you down there now. We'll shoot some paintballs and see how you can optimise your settings for your CS1 to get the maximum rate of fire. Okay, so we've optimised the loader settings to try and achieve maximum rate of fire. But there are also a few tweaks that we can do on the CS1 itself. I'm going to go through those very quickly with you now. What you're going to need is loader, full of paint, you need your, your tank set up, obviously your CS1, and you're going to need a chronograph. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to switch the CS1 on, and I've already got this one opened up, we're going to open it up, and we're going to disable the tournament lock. So now we're free to make adjustments and settings. I'm going to go into the menu, and we're going to cycle down until we see filter settings. That point will then go down and at the full parameter it will be stock 4 milliseconds. We're going to take that down to 1 millisecond. What that means is that when the ball enters the breach it only waits for 1 millisecond before it starts the firing cycle. So that's a 1 millisecond. Now the next thing we're going to do, a bit more complicated, is we're going to go in and dwell tune CS1. What this does is it allows more time um, for the ball to actually fall into the breach by making sure that the bolt comes back um, as soon as it can. So we'll make the bolt come back sooner, which means more time for the paintball to fall from the loader into the breach to make sure that we hit our peak rate of fire. So first thing to do is go to the SFR, take your 1 8 hex key, and we'll set that to its middle setting. So that's the little pointer on the SFR at between one and two o'clock. So 45 degrees backwards. That will give us a medium bolt speed. This is only controlling the bolt speed on the forward cycle. So we're making sure that the bolt is at a medium speed, which actually on the CS1 is equivalent to a, a, a GO 3.5 forward bolt speed. 
So forward bolt speed uh, in the middle setting there. And then from there we can dwell tune down, which will mean the bolt can travel forward and we'll start to retract the bolt uh, almost immediately as soon as the ball is fired. There'll be no more waiting at the front stop. So once we've done that, we now have the loader on. Uh, we're all gassed up. We are in the, we're going to go back out of the filter settings, up to timing settings, and the first parameter you see there is the dwell setting, and we're at 27 milliseconds a stock. What we're going to do, switch on the chronograph, and we're going to chrono the gun. So, we're almost dead on 300 here. 290s, 298, 289, 291. So, what we're going to do now is start taking the dwell down. And the first time you take it down, you can probably take it down quite some, uh, quite a few milliseconds. So I'm going to take that down to about 22 milliseconds. So I've knocked five milliseconds off that dwell time. And I'm going to chrono again. And you can see we're still in the same kind of area, still in the 290s. So our dwell tuning, we haven't started to clip any velocity off the, off the uh, uh, off the peak yet, so I'm going to take that down again. I'll take it down, take another, I don't know, take it down to 19, say for the next couple of shots. And we're still right up there, still in the 290s, so we can take that down even further. Now, we're now at 17.5 milliseconds, 17.3 milliseconds, and we've just seen the velocity drop very slightly. So we we'll take a little bit more off just to confirm. Yeah, now we're starting to see some velocity drop off there. So what we're going to do is take that back up. We'll take it up to 18 milliseconds. And then reach around again. And we'll see we're still in the two nineties. two nineties. We're all good. So now we're dwell tuned, we can back out of that, go back into just regular fire mode, back out of everything and it's saved. Now we can test the gun, make sure they're happy with the performance of the gun. Obviously, the thing about dwell tuning is if anything changes, the weather, the temperature, uh, the amount of grease on the bolt, or the, the SFR setting, it can affect that. Uh, the mechanical dwell of the gun, which means that you will have to readjust the electronic dwell of the CS1. So, dwell tuning is great for optimising performance, but you do need to be on top of the regular maintenance of the CS1 more often, and if there are any adverse conditions or any changes in, in the conditions that you're playing in generally, then it is advisable to go back in and re-dwell tune the CS1. That should get your rate of fire up, and uh, hopefully I'll sort everything you need. Now assuming that you've optimised your settings on the firing range and the issue still persists, we may need to look in more detail into the mechanics of the solenoid inside the CS1. What we're going to need to do is take out the solenoid, take out the spool, check the spool for uh, debris, dirt, swarf, we then need to re-lubricate the spool, rebuild the solenoid and retest the gun. All the information you need on how to strip down the solenoid and lubricate it can be found here. Once you've done the solenoid, you've done your settings, you've checked your loader, your CS1 should be running at peak performance, all issues resolved.